This is our interview with Ted Sims from Aperture about updates to the 600D and the long-awaited Nova 300C panel. The Cinema 5D Virtual Show is brought to you by b h the professional source for all your video needs. CVP, the leading specialist in creative cine, video, and photo solutions. Fujifilm, value from innovation. Tilta, arm your camera. And Sattler. Set your ideas in motion. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cinema5D.com. My name is Graham Ehlers Sheldon. Of course, this is our virtual trade show, and this is actually the second time we've checked in with Ted from Aperture. How's it going, Ted? Doing good. Keeping busy. Hoping everybody's staying safe. So you just walked us through the 60X, the 60D, and the bulb. Uh, any out, anything with a higher output, maybe, that you can show us? Absolutely. So, uh, this right here is something that we've been getting a lot of questions about. And believe me, I see the comments, I know. Uh, this right here is the new Aperture 600D. And this is something that we showed off last year. It's just kind of a very, very early type of show. We wanted to get some early feedback on it and just show you guys a little bit of what we're working on in the near future. Now, the main thing to know about the 600D is we're showing off for the first time a couple of changes here, most notably in the actual ballast design. So. First thing to know is if you guys are familiar with the previous video, you saw this is what the traditional ballast looked like. Uh, it was significantly larger here a lot in silver ribbon. So if you guys know, this was the traditional design for the actual ballast. Uh, significantly larger as far as the actual sizing goes. It could be mounted onto the stand. And the main thing to know about this is that this would take four batteries to basically be able to power the light. If you used four 14 volt batteries. The new design actually has a similar design to the 300D Mark II. Much, much slimmer. You've got this paracord design here on the top, so you can actually carry it this way if you want to. You've also got lightning clamp here on the back, so if I actually want to snap this onto a stand, I can do that as well. And then finally, on the actual design too, you've also got the feet on the back here, so you can actually lay this flat on the floor. Now, the next couple of things that we want to mention here is that as far as the actual power options go, you can power this off of wall power, you can power this off of battery power. Uh, likewise, if you do not have the kind of bigger 15 amp, 28 volt batteries, you can use 26 volt batteries, but again, those are still behemoths. If you want to use 14 volt batteries, which are the batteries that we recommend, 300D Mark II, the 120D, things like that, uh, there is actually a separate battery box that basically goes off and you can use four of those batteries. And of course it will charge the actual batteries while in use, but it'll also charge the actual light, power the actual light with those four 14 volt batteries. Likewise, if you want to power this off of block batteries too, you can also plug those into the bottom as well too. So this is fully block battery powerful as well. So a lot of different power options for you, no matter what kind of use you're using. And again, for a lot of you higher end guys out there, we wanna make sure that those power options are built in and available, no matter what truck you're putting inside. But this actual controller box will charge batteries while it's in use. So for you guys out there that own V-mount or gold mount battery chargers, you know, this is no easy feat. This is no affordable tool out there. Uh, this is a light that not only uses the actual power from the batteries, but also charges itself, while also being powerable from wall power itself as well too. So full cabling here works in addition to that. We actually changed out opposed to the previous design. You now have actually full weatherproof locking connections here too. So right here, you can see the designs are actually a little bit different than previously. This right here and everything, including the light, including the actual controller box is all weatherproof now. So if you want to leave this out in the rain, again, uh, you will be okay for the most part as far as the actual water being able to trickle on this. We know that a lot of the time when you're using big bright lights like this, they're going to be sitting outside of windows, outdoors, in the elements. We want this light to be able to be that power for you. Last thing to note here is that, of course, this is a Bowens mount controllable light. So just like before, this is an LED equivalent to approximately a 5K tungsten or approximately a 1.2K HMI that can be plugged into wall power and uses only 600 watts of LED power. Uh, 720 watts total. The chip itself is actually a 600 watt real LED. I think a lot of people out there, they just measure it off of power consumption. We're actually measuring it off of what is the actual LED pulling as far as the punch making this. Yes, this is a technically speaking about the brightest point source bones mount modifiable light on the market. So very, very excited about this. Now, the next thing to show here on the actual light is when we actually come over here and we change the actual modifier on it, as we talked about before. Woo! That is bright and that is at 10%. Uh, is we want to show off a couple of the new modifiers for it. So. This right here is something that we polled our users for directly. We asked them, what size Fresnel do you guys want to see next? What makes sense for our bigger lights? You can see 
This is no joke to make. This is an extremely large for now, but for a lot of you guys out there that are using a lot of studio lighting, that are familiar with traditional tungsten units, things like lights that we have in the back over here, uh, you already know that the quality of light that you can get from a large size for now like this is not only a hard light, but it gives that kind of soft, creamy look from being able to magnify and make that light the size of this larger for now. So this right here is a true 10 inch glass for now. Unlike a lot of Fresnels out there that I don't know why, but they measure the actual distance from the plastic to the plastic or from the actual metal to the metal. Uh, the main problem here is that the Fresnel often isn't actually the full 10 inches that are being advertised. One of the main things here is that the actual glass here is 10 inches, giving it that size that you're looking for. This is spot and floodable by actually twisting the Fresnel itself. And when I actually want to mount this on, this will not only mount onto the 600D, which this is optimized for. So if I snap this on real quick, I pop this in. Pop this in just like that. So, in addition to being able to pop it on, uh, a couple of the changes here as far as the actual 600D is, we did build in this curved yoke, so now that the actual yoke goes in for larger modifiers and things like that, I can now tilt down without it actually touching the yoke, I get that expanded range, and of course now you have something that is extremely bright in your toolkit that basically all filmmakers should be able to own when this actually comes out. Likewise, on the front of this too, you actually have full 10 inch Fresnel style barn doors that are gonna be coming with these as well too. So if you wanna be able to purchase barn doors, you will be able to get these as well too. We are making them straight from the source as well. So this set of barn doors does allow for, because these are larger, you might ask, why are these barn doors so large? The reason is because when you have a larger source like this, if you want to be able to actually cut the light and be able to get sharp lines, be able to actually focus in, shape that light the way that you want to, you need larger barn doors, which is the same reason why you see this kind of stuff on traditional and larger studio fixtures. So everything can be built in here. So everything can be attached here. So you can see this is kind of what the full beast looks like by itself. A full 600 watt, 10 inch Fresnel behemoth here that can be able to shape and punch through windows or whatever accessories you're looking for. Powerball LED technology. You can actually technically speak and chain up to three of these onto a traditional household circuit, which is very, very exciting when this comes out. Uh, the last thing we want to show off today is the other style of barn doors. So I think a lot of people out there not familiar with seeing so a lot of people out there are familiar with the barn doors that we made ourselves and one of the biggest things that we have on our own barn doors is we have the negative reflector now the reason that the negative reflector is so important is that when you're trying to shape your light again one of the biggest problems with kind of traditional fresnels is that even though you had that ability to spot and flood in the actual fixture itself a lot of the time if you wanted to make a sharp shadow or be able to sharp shape an extremely hard light the light source in the Fresnel is still too large. Again, that Fresnel gives it kind of a creamy, softer look because it makes it the size of the Fresnel. However, in this case, because we're using chip on board technology, because we're using modular lighting shaping modifiers, you can actually use the bare bulb COB by itself. And in our actual own barn door system, you now have the option to use the negative reflector dish on the inside here. So this dish here is coated back. And what that's going to do is it's going to make the size of your light source only the size of this extremely small chip on board LED. So when I wanna shape and cut the light using this, it can get extremely sharp shadows, no matter where I'm shooting this thing, despite the intensity, despite the size, despite it being what it is by itself. So uh, these are really the big updates that we wanted to show. Uh, again, you will have wireless DMX being able to be controllable in this controller box. This is the new controller box design. Uh, this is something that we're excited to show. This is coming out again, Q3 this year. So you will be seeing it soon. Same date that we promised before, uh, but look out for it. Uh, again, for all the people out there that think that LED isn't going to get brighter and more powerful each year, uh, it absolutely is. It's absolutely something that we're working on and uh, you'll see this coming soon. Very cool. Well, Ted, always a pleasure. I mean, it's clear you guys listen to the feedback from filmmakers. It's been very cool to see the journey from sort of the, uh, the Mark I era of products to where you guys are now. So I appreciate your time today. Absolutely. Oh, wait, there's uh, one more thing that I haven't mentioned yet. Now, the biggest question that we've been getting asked is about the 600D, but not just the 600D. Also, of course, the other light that I have right here, which is the Nova. And the Nova has been on a lot of sets. It's been basically going around a lot of Netflix and Disney shows at this point. Very excited to have this and finally release it. As far as the Nova goes, um, today, the big announcement, of course, because we can't finish our four weeks unless we're special about it, is that it's finally available for pre-order. Uh, 
It is available for pre-order launching two weeks from today, which is going to be May 27th. Uh, likewise, they're shipping six weeks after, so they have finally arrived. We do not think you guys are going to be disappointed. We know that we're late to the party, so it has to be something that's exciting. Keeps you guys pumped. Uh, this right here, the price, we were finally able to get it set at $16.99. So very, very excited about that. Likewise, the actual price if you want the light and a rolling hard shell kit. And we're going to be packaging that also at $18.99. So whichever one you guys want, the option is you. So uh, if you've been watching and following this product, we know it's been a long time coming. Thank you for the patience. Thank you for the support, the feedback. Seriously, every little bit of it goes into the product, makes it a better product to what it is today. We're really proud of it and ready to announce it. So uh, again, be ready for it. It's coming soon. Very cool. Thank you, Ted, for the Nova update. Do you have another nine or 10 other products back there you want to tease while I have you or are you good? Nope. Nothing else. Totally done. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, thanks for your time, Ted. Uh, and uh, everyone stay tuned to cinema5d.com for more ongoing coverage from our virtual trade show. Everyone stay safe, stay healthy. We'll be back soon. Thanks, everyone.